supplies delivery for the farm shop. Just taking some fat up to Kevin. Just filling Kevin up with nitrogen here and it's a bit clumpy so I'm just rinsing it off the ground and it breaks up a bit more. These are the clumps that are coming out of the bags. Most of the clumps are just easily broken up and they'll break up going through the grid in the machine but there's a few clumps like this where I think a bit of moisture has gotten in and they're just they're solid. So there's nothing you can do about them. They just put them in the side of the field, the rain will break them up and you'll, you'll get a really big patch of grass here. Just giving it a wee quick, quick check over check all the rams work fine everything seems to be in working order so it'll go into the shed now and it probably won't get used till harvest time this is our first big trailer it's needing a clean actually other than that this compared to the other one they're very much the same this one has a, a roll cover on the top it's got different tires to the new one just a different brand same shape size and the new one has a different style of paint this one, it's 2017, so it's four year old now. The paint's not been great on it. We've been a bit disappointed in that. There's rust all, all along here, rusty patches here. And there's a few bits on the, the arches here, here, here. Would have expected that to last a lot longer than it has. So that's been a bit disappointing. It doesn't get abused at all. It's only ever used for grain and wood chips, so it's not got any hard materials on it, like gravel, stone. There's no dung going in it, anything like that. So, a bit disappointed in the paint in this one. Hopefully the new one's paint lasts a lot longer than this paint has. There is, there is a wee um, tub of refresher paint, the cable tied to it. I don't know if that's a good sign or not, probably not. Just along the road, and that's the field of wheat. I've got the bale grab on. And I've got a, a wee lorry of uh, hay bales to load. The shed here, we don't own it, uh, and they're wanting it back, so whereas everything in it is getting sold, uh, all the hay and all the straw. So this is the last of the hay, and then there's some straw left. this time every year and uh, I think it all goes to Isle of Butte what he takes away. Lulu's got a wee box now on the quad. Quite content. Dunk's back with a sprayer. He was spraying along the road yesterday. He was spraying today. Um, Pre-emergence herbicide on the crop we finished yesterday up the hill. I'm going to make an attempt this morning at moving these sheep to a different field. Hopefully they're just going to follow a bag and not wander onto the road and get hit by a car. So far so good. They're not on the road. Come on. Here they come. Well, Frankie, your sheep are well trained. That's just gone way, way better than I expected. They're all in. Oh, just about. This sheep thing is an absolute doddle. I can't see why anyone who has sheep can complain. Sprayer's getting filled up. Fat spreader's getting filled up. Hello. 
sprayer so that tank there on the left that's full of water chemical store in that container there so the sprayer has a big tank you put chemicals in it and then you dilute it all down with a few thousand liters of water these booms they extend out 24 meter wide and it has wee nozzles and it sprays all the solution across the crop filling up with ferret Edwards Engineering are doing an electrical service on the grain dryer just to get it ready for harvest time, make sure everything's going fine. Make sure everything's running smoothly. So come harvest, everything goes when we want it to. We don't want to break down at harvest. It causes a lot of issues, slows down the whole process and you can't afford to lose time at harvest. You might question what we do with all the empty bags of fertilizer. We just burn them. I'm just joking, that's illegal. We fill up a big trailer. Once we've got enough to fill a trailer, we take them in and get recycled. Fella's making good progress. Trying to get on his feet sometimes. His back legs aren't very strong, so he's struggling, but he'll get there. You can hear this water tank filling up. Uh, this is the one the sprayer takes water out of. The sprayer was just in, um, filling up with water. We take out of this tank so that the pump can take water off of this quick enough to fill the sprayer. And then while he's out in the fields, the, it's connected up to the mains uh, and this slowly fills up while he's out in the fields. Just trying to fix a burst pipe at the moment. Down in the bottom field used to be an old water tank and it's burst. But because the sprayer tank's filling up, there's no pressure. So there's no pressure further down, so we can't tell you can't tell where it's bubbling up from. So I'm just up at the top of the tank. And this is a bald cock valve. So I'm just holding it up like it would be full. And then it should build up the pressure down at the bottom where the burst is. And we can see dad's down there. we will see where the water is bubbling up from. And then we'll know where to dig. Dad's found a leak, so. It's absolutely scorching now, it's freezing this morning. Last bag of urea, and then we'll move on to P&K product. Edwards Engineering. Got the dryer going, um, testing out a few bits. He's changed the nozzles uh, on the um, fuel intake, so the nozzles spray the fuel that goes into the burner. He's just changed them out, they're full of carbon and whatnot, so new set of them. That tank there, that's the fuel tank for the grain dryer actually runs off of kerosene it used to run off diesel kerosene was a bit cheaper swapped over don't need to ch actually change any of the settings or any of the opening sizes and whatnot it took the kerosene no bother sometimes you have to adjust it a wee bit but no bother just dug down a bit and I'm just taking the forklift and slacking off a wee bit of ground I don't want to go too deep because I'll hit the pipes. So we have to dig that man, with, a, with a shovel. So we've got an old leaking trough here. You can see the water's run down there. We've dug down a wee bit to find there's a connection. There's a pipe that runs in there. And somewhere down in there we're leaking. So now we know how far we can dig with a forklift without hitting, hitting any pipes. So we'll dig a wee bit further down then we'll dig the rest with the shovels. Tongue's back in with a sprayer for another tank of water and chemicals. All farm kit looks nice in the sun. We've made it down now. Quite a heap of soil. But this used to be an old valve. It got buried in and now it's leaking. So there's another joint here. So we'll be able to just take this out, run a new bit from here to here and fill it all in again. Used to be an old uh, water trough here for cattle, but we don't have cattle in these fields anymore. Looking for a, a blank, so a stopper for the end of the pipe, so we can just shut it all off. We've got every other type of fitting, any fitting, you name it, but we've not got a blank, so I'm gonna have to go and buy one. So yesterday's video was, what was this? And it is a fuel gauge. So it's an uh, ultrasonic, um, gauge and um, there's a probe on the diesel tank and it sends a signal out to this at what level the diesel tank's at so you know when it's empty and it's filled up it just needs power from a socket spray heading out again just filled up i'm away into the valve here 
So that's the valve there. That's it on. Turn it 90 degrees, it turns off. So everything from this valve down, which is all the hens, all the cattle courts, there's a cottage, a few caravans, some taps, whatnot, is controlled by this valve. So we've turned it back on. We've messed with some pipes. We're gonna go see what is and what isn't working. Thankfully, the sprayer tank is just above the valve there, so we don't want to stop the sprayer going. So that's the hole we've dug over there. The hens don't have water at the moment, which we're a bit confused about. So the junction goes the, <laughs> goes the wrong way. It points up the hill and the water goes down the hill. So it really confused us, but I think we've worked it out and it's kind of fixed. Finished spreading all the urea product. So now we're moving from that, which is all nitrogen to just P and K, which is phosphate and potassium. And that's for root growth, water uptake, and chlorophyll in the leaves, and uh, disease prevention, really. This stuff's uh, it's not white anymore. Pink and black and blue and white, multicolored. I was getting wound up, I was, he was telling me I brought the wrong bags, but they're the right bags. We're queued up to get out of the yard, postman's in the way. That's the sprayer going there, so he's on wheat just now, he's putting on a growth regulator, weed killer and some manganese. Uh, the growth regulator is just to come harvest time, we don't want the crop to be too big because it can get rained on, become heavy and then fall over. Another lorry here for wheat, 29 tonne again, one more to go and then we'll see what's left in the shed and see what we've got to sell. Lorry loaded. Really, really nice evening. It's about half six now. Nice warm day today. I'm just gonna head down to this rape, see how it's doing. It should be starting to flower soon. It's looking okay. You can see, you can see the yellowness starting to come. These uh, flowers will open and then you'll be a big sea of yellow. If it hadn't been for the cold spell or the cold nights for the last two weeks, it'd probably be about a foot taller, all of this. So that's held it back massively. A bit disappointing, but nothing you can do about it. Anyway, I'm going to trundle home with a forklift and then I'll go have my tea and go to bed. But today's quiz question, I think of one. Right, today's a riddle. There are 30 cows in a field and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Hope the pigeons eat all that before the boss man sees that I spilt it.